This year's set of new Apple products is surprisingly a bigger update than their predecessors were. The iPhone 15 Pro series especially, uh, or a big step up from the iPhone 14 Pro. And the same, I think, can be said about the Apple Watch Series 9. Yes, externally, they look very similar to the Apple Watch Series 8, and there's not a lot of uh, different things to look at other than that new pink color option, which, by the way, I love. But there are some changes under the hood and some new features that might actually dramatically change the way you interact with the watch. I am talking, of course, about double tap, as well as new on-device Siri processing. My full review of the Apple Watch Series 9, including impressions of things like battery life, performance, and real-world use, is up on Engadget.com, so head on over there for those details. For this video, though, I want to focus on something that will be more interesting to look at, and that is double tap. We'll be going deep down into how Double Tap works, why is it different from assistive touch, and how can you trick it or not. And of course, I also want to talk a little bit about how Double Tap and say on-device Siri fit into Apple's bigger vision here. So here's the basics, right? Double tap is a gesture that has you put your thumb and your pointer finger together in rapid succession. And that basically is like double clicking in midair. Now this works with the Apple Watch Series 9 by default. You won't have to turn anything on and when you lift the watch up and the screen turns on, double tapping will bring up the smart stack that lives below the homepage. You can then double tap to either scroll through widgets on the page or if you change a setting in your phone, have that be uh, the action that starts whatever's the top stack. I've said this the second Apple introduced double tap as a gesture at its keynote last week and I'll say it again. Yes, this has sort of been done before on Apple Watch. Assistive touch is a very similar feature. It's an accessibility minded tool that you have to first enable uh, in your phone. Then, when you have that setting turned on, double clench your wrist and that will activate a white outline around elements on your watch face. In a way that is basically double tap. And I would understand if you thought they were basically the same thing. But in the application of double tap versus assistive touch is where the difference lies. Assistive touch will let you navigate the entire watchOS interface. You can use the clench to maybe move through elements and then pinch to select things or double pinch to you know, move through a manual, for example. In fact, when you turn on assistive touch on the Series 9, you'll get a prompt that says you can't use both double tap and assistive touch together at the same time. Double tap is nothing you have to enable and only works for certain apps or certain parts of the OS. For example, if you have the timer app open, you can use the double tap gesture to start it, stop it, or dismiss it. When a notification comes in, you can double tap to hit the reply button. Basically, anything that is the primary button on the face of whatever's on your watch is going to be what double tap can trigger. Even then, it doesn't work on every single thing on the Watch Series 9. If you're looking at your move rings, for example, double tapping does nothing because there really isn't a button for you to press. That's not to say, of course, that you can use assistive touch to do every single thing on the watch. It's just way more comprehensive. I do appreciate that even when you're not able to use double tap on something, the little indicator bubble still pops up to show you that the watch recognized you successfully did a double tap because this just helps with learning the gesture over time. Now that that's out of the way, let's move on to how it works. So I've already gone through most of this, right? When an alert comes in, you can double tap in midair. If your hands are full or you know, you're holding a side plank as I do for hours throughout the day, I even just liked it for the sheer joy of lazily scrolling through Reddit on the couch with my phone on, in my right hand and an alarm comes up and instead of having to reach across the screen <laughs> because the iPhone 15 Pro Max is still kind of big, I could just double tap on my watch to dismiss the alarm. To be clear, Double Tap is not going to be available at launch. It'll be available later this year. But for our testing purposes, Apple did send us a second unit that is specifically tweaked so that us reviewers could get to check out the feature ahead of our reviews. But let's talk about how accurate the system is at detecting my actual pinches. I've said this a few times now in my Apple coverage, but basically Apple is using a combination of the accelerometer, the gyroscope, and the optical heart rate sensor to detect blood flow anomalies and movements 
and take all of that data and see if you've been pinching, right? So if you, for instance, are bringing your thumb to your ring finger or your middle finger, that's not going to trigger the double tap. But I have found, however, that it is possible to make the Series 9 think I'm double tapping by quickly touching the side of my finger as opposed to the pad or pretending to snap with my thumb and pointer finger. So of course it's not a perfect system, but I think over time you'll learn what the best way to do this gesture is and what works best for you. The one last thing I will say about double tap at this point is that people who have used Vision Pro, or if you remember our Vision Pro hands-on, you'll know that that's how you interact with or select things in Apple's mixed reality environment. I get the sense that this is something Apple does want us to pick up because it may feature somewhere else in Apple's larger plan. Another piece of that puzzle, I believe, is Siri. And on the Apple Watch Series 9, we've got a few tweaks and upgrades here. The most significant of these is on-device processing for the assistant. So responses are quicker, they don't have to leave the watch to be processed and returned to you. And actually, the best thing about it is you're no longer reliant on a phone or internet connection to get your requests answered. It was such a joy to be able to ask Siri on my Series 9 to start an outdoor walk workout, even though I had left my iPhone 15 Pro Max at home uh, when I went to the gym that morning. Something else that Apple did with Siri on the Series 9 is improve its race to speak to Siri algorithm. Now, thanks to the S9 system and package processor, which gives it a bit more power efficiency, the watch can actually allow for a two-second audio buffer. So whenever it thinks you're about to say the hot word for Siri, it'll start listening. And when you do say those words, it actually can put out the words you had said in two seconds ago. So it looks like it's instantly responding and that it heard everything you said, as opposed to cutting off maybe the first two words of what you uttered. Finally, Siri's also supposed to get a bit more useful on the watch with Siri health requests. This feature is not yet available, so for now, you'll see how lame Siri kind of is actually, uh, when you ask the assistant things like, uh, how many steps have I taken so far? Or how many calories did I burn in my last workout? Or how many hours did I sleep last night? You'll see it brings you to the data pages on your watch instead of actually giving you a direct answer. But with the update over the air later this year, hopefully these answers will get much more helpful. To me, a faster, smarter Siri is going to be a very important component of making watchOS a better smartwatch ecosystem. The more ways that Apple can free you from having to touch or swipe on a touchscreen, the better. I mean, not only does it make for probably easier interaction with, say, mixed reality elements, it's also just easier to live with your hands free to not have to prod and poke at things. Now, most other changes coming to the Series 9 are also available via watchOS 10. So things like logging your mental health or that new smart stack that I talked about. These are all just part of the navigational changes in the software. What might make more of a difference is in the hardware. And I'll just rattle off some quick updates here. For one thing, the display will now get a lot brighter up to 2000 nits, but it will also get darker down to just one nit. I mean, sometimes it can get really painful to have your watch screen turn on and scorch your eyeballs in the middle of the night. Now you can prevent that from happening. However, I have noticed that this can actually get a little too dim and make it harder to read. So you'll have to go into display settings to tweak this for yourself. Another hardware difference is the new UWB chip that I mentioned earlier. This basically enables a new precision finding uh, interface on the watch so you can ping your iPhone from the control center and actually see like directional guides as to where it might be sitting in the room. For my deeper thoughts on how all of that comes together to make the Series 9 a worthy or not upgrade this year, go on over to Engadget.com. For now, I'm gonna be walking around the streets of New York City, double tapping in midair, maybe looking like a crazy person, just so we can test this feature out more deeply. Meanwhile, for more coverage of other smartwatches that you should consider, and for all of the news out of this really crazy week or month of tech launches non-stop, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And until next time,